Fans are here. The grills are heated up, and we are just about set, ready to go. Here in Starkville, Mississippi, the regional final. Mississippi State and Miami here at Duty Noble Field. And what an environment it should be. First pitch, just minutes away. And welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. On a Chamber of Commerce Sunday evening here in Stark Vegas, here at Duty Noble Field, we welcome you for this regional final. Mississippi State and Miami, the Hurricanes have survived back-to-back -back elimination games and wins against Southern and Central Michigan. Great to have you with us alongside of the former single season stolen base record holder in SEC history, Nick Belmonte. I'm Roy Philpott, and I tell you what, we thought we would see this matchup at some point this weekend. It took us some time to get here, yep. but finally it's arrived, and boy, what a matchup it should be. It's a historic matchup. These iconic programs have never met in Starkville, if you can believe that. And that Hurricane offense, they are blowing at Category 5 Gale Force wins. Nine home runs in the tournament already. If you like offense, this is going to be the right matchup for you tonight. What's already been a sensational day. And Rowdy Jordan from Mississippi State, 6 for 9 here in this regional. He's been on fire. And he's been working the right field corner right there. 6 for 9, 5 RBIs. And he's a guy that he continues to get it going. They're going to be hard to stop. But also Tanner Allen, another guy, 5 for 10. And he's hitting the ball to the right side. This is a home run he hit just the other night. He's going to give it the Anderson Plaza salute. Tanner Allen getting it going. A lot of offense from both these sides. And for the Hurricanes, nine home runs have been hit in just three contests so far. Pick your poison. Six bombs in this launching pad earlier today in the win against Central Michigan. If you're a pitching coach watching this right now, turn away. You don't want to see this. This has been unbelievable. Nine home runs, as you said, six in the early game against Central Michigan. Del Castillo for the Hurricanes has three. Terrell has two. In fact, he has 24 now. That's more than the Hurricanes hit all of last season. They are on fire with the power game, and they want to continue to do that if they want to bring a victory here tonight and bring this to a Monday winner-take-all game. Canes got to win the next two to punch their ticket to the Supers. Mississippi State could do it tonight. Back at Duty Noble Field right after this. Well, the dude is rocking. The U in town, and for the first time ever, Miami and Mississippi State here in Starkville, Mississippi. The number six national seed Bulldogs and the Hurricanes play the little football here before first pitch. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott on a picture-perfect evening for college baseball. Mississippi State designated the visiting team for this matchup. Jake Mangum will lead things off. He's hitless in his last four games, but I tell you what, Nick, he's been picked up by everybody else in the order. And look for him to have a big game tonight. He's going to get the crowd going early, and he's going to start waving it, and everybody's going to join him in mass, and it's going to go from there. But that's a guy that's due, as you said. Starting pitcher for the U, Slade Ciccone, and we saw him earlier this weekend out of the bullpen, the freshman at 6'4", 2'12". Charged with an awfully tall task this evening. Yeah, freshman in this environment, it's going to be very interesting. His job right here is to at least get him four or five innings. We have Ed, Evan McKendry waiting in the wing, so we don't know what we're going to see there, what Gino Damari decides to do. But he has his better guys in the bullpen ready to go. Jake Mangum. Nobody in SEC history has recorded more hits. He broke the record earlier this year. And this capacity crowd at the Dude about ready to erupt for the start of this one. in college baseball history will lead it off. And a 
the first pitch from Ciccone inside for ball one underway in Starkville. 0 for 9 in this regional so far. Tanner Allen actually the leading hitter now for Mississippi State at 352 if you can believe that. And Mangum will pop this one up straight away center. Jordan Lala tracking and recording the first out of the evening. That's the first big hurdle for Slade Ciccone. The freshman to get that big hitter out, the SEC hit king. And he's done it. That's hurdle number one. There's many ahead. And what he's going to need to do, he's a four-pitch mixed guy. Fastball 93 is his tops. He actually threw that one 94, pitch backwards, meaning off-speed first, and then work in and out. It's already been a crazy day around the country. How about Texas A&M's walk-off Grand Slam win in Morgantown against West Virginia? As you see, Jordan Westberg, the sophomore from Texas. And Westberg, two for eight so far in this regional. Grounded is short. Zamora up with it. And Freddie Zamora, the five-tool player, fields and fires cleanly. Hurdle number two for Ciccone is to get through the first inning unscathed. They are a solid defensive club, are the Hurricanes. Zamora might be their best all-around player. Our first look at Tanner Allen, five for ten. Here in this regional for the sophomore out of Theodore, Alabama. Grew up idolizing Chipper Jones. Kind of bears his resemblance if you watch him closely. Two quick outs here in the top of the first. You see his number is actually now the leading hitter for the Bulldogs this year. What's the mindset, Nick, for a team like Mississippi State? They've got tonight and tomorrow to advance to the Supers versus Miami, which is still playing an elimination game tonight. Yeah, they want to crush it early here. They want to get on top, get the crowd involved, and let Miami think, hey, this isn't your year. You gave it a nice run, but this is our year. So their mindset right now, try to score early and often. Set the tone. Get everybody in around this big sellout crowd. You got a freshman on the mound, and that is going to be a huge deal. And that's one of the things that Ciccone has to deal with. Probably the biggest crowd he's ever faced. The 0-2 swatted foul. Miami did play in Gainesville earlier this year in front of a crowd of about 6,000. That's been the largest environment they've right. played a game in front of. We're expecting at least 10,000 tonight. It is Sunday. It is later, so you never know. But the atmosphere has been rocking for about the last 90 minutes. They're ready to see their Bulldogs advance. As Allen is retired, that'll be the first strikeout for Slade Ciccone. And one, two, three, go the Bulldogs here in the top of the first. Kane's coming up to bat just underway in Starkville. First inning, Miami coming up to bat for the first time. As you take a look, it's a rally banana somewhere over there. Maybe a Jamaican rally banana. Banana man. Right in front of the left field lofts here at Duty Noble Field. The Miami batting order, Jordan Lala will lead things off. Adrian Del Castillo, the talented freshman, has ripped three home runs in this regional so far. Tell you what, Nick, there is power up and down the order. Yeah, nine home runs in the regional. Six already today, so you know they're thinking confidently as they get into this ballgame. Peyton Plumley will make the start for the Bulldogs. 6'3", 200-pound senior from Olive Branch. And a guy that has to have his good sinker. This is going to be key for him. Throws slider for strikes. Gets it up there 89-92. But he's all about getting downward movement, enticing ground balls. So here's Lala, the prototypical leadoff man for head coach Gino Damari in his first season in Coral Gables as the head coach. And he'll rip this one to deep left. Back is Jordan. And plenty of real estate. One pitch, one out. Rowdy Jordan, what a regional it has been. We mentioned the offensive numbers. Nearly brought in a home run back in the first game against Southern on Friday. Had it in his glove, hit the wall, and it popped out. Anthony Villar, a freshman out of Miami in the two-hole tonight. His father, Henry, also played at the U in the early 90s, was a teammate of the current head coach, Gino Damari. Even going all the way back to high school. 
Yeah, that was at Westminster Christian playing for the great Rich Hoffman Hall of Fame coach who also coached Alex Rodriguez. Same program. I think the Canes have won four national championships in their storied history. Mississippi State's been to the College World Series a bunch, still without a title, but many people think this is the year that could change here in Starkville. Absolutely. They're a very balanced ball club. You see the 10 College World Series appearances, including one last year. Two and one to Villar. What well, is a hot night? There's a lot of humidity. This could turn out to be a launching pad of sorts at the dude. And you look at the offensive numbers, uh -oh. certainly they would support that idea. Yeah, you better be aware in the left field loft. You never know. A 2 1 to Villar just missed with a fastball at 91. There it is. Stay loose, guys. These guys are hitting balls out of the yard left and right. Literally. And we got to tell you, we did get a incredible tour of the left field lofts, courtesy of Mississippi State AD John Cohen yesterday. And walking away so impressed. A big cut runs the count full. Yeah, it's an incredible venue they have out there. Interesting right here is right before this pitch, Okay, and they flip-flopped the shortstop and a third baseman defensively. They're waving. They know, they know we're talking about them. First test for Plumley to pay off pitch. Grounded to short. And Westberg playing almost in the same position the second baseman Foscu would be. Records his second out. They were flip-flopping their middle infielders during the at-bat. Pitch to pitch. Now they're back to normal setup. Here's Freddie Zamora, two for 13 so far here in Stark Vegas. Rips this one towards the gap, right center. Mangum on his horse, a sliding grab to retire the side. And the Canes go one, two, three here in the bottom of the first inning and put a star by that one. He's the hit king all time in the SEC, but he could also flash some leather. That was destined to split the gaps. Mangum said, uh-uh, not here. i got to throw that zero out there. His pitcher loves it. We've played one. Nothing, nothing. Top of the second inning. 82 degrees, a slight breeze blowing towards right field. And a beautiful night for postseason baseball. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott, back at the new dude. As Elijah McNamee playing in right field tonight. Takes a first pitch strike. So we've seen 14 pitches. We're already a full inning in. This is quite a pace. And if you're a fan of the Bulldogs, the good news is McNamee starting to gain health. Missed a couple of weeks. The left foot injury. It's been the DH the first two games in this regional, now starting in right field this evening. Known as Big Hit Mac. Very confident in clutch hitting situations. Try to check his swing, he could not. And the strikeout for Ciccone. That'll be his second. He was looking breaking ball, got the fastball right there. Ciccone's looked sharp. You want to talk about keys to this game to keep Miami's season alive. Ciccone pitching well, yes. priority number one. Now he was the midweek starter when the season started. Then with injuries to Evan McKendry and Mc Chris McMahon, he became a rotation guy. There's Foscu. Not her half and a called strike. And if it all works out tonight for him, that would end up being a blessing in disguise because he got a lot of confidence and a lot of experience as a starter. Justin Foscu, first team all SEC, smashed 14 home runs this year to lead the Bulldogs. And really starting to come into his zone, four for eight in the regional. 
Yeah, not very, very many second basemen. You see with 14 home runs on the season. Pops it up right behind home plate. That should reach the stands, and it will. Well, Nick, what a great week this has been for us here in Starkville. The hospitality has been off the charts. The baseball Incredible. has been even better. Just watching the fans react and how they love their college baseball here in Starkville. It's been an honor to be here doing this regional in this venue. And the one, two, a little blooper that Zamora will easily track down. Five up, five down for the dogs. So early on, Ciccone's got him out front. They're thinking one pitch, he's throwing them another. Our first look at Dustin Skelton, junior out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Former draft pick of the Toronto Blue Jays back in 2016. That's what I talk about, pitching backwards right there. First pitch slider just missed. And a nice job by Skelton not chasing after it. A lot of real estate right up the middle for the catcher. One and one to count. I mean, you saw that Texas A&M Grand Slam, the walk-off win against West Virginia. That was going on during Miami's win against Central Michigan that we were calling. That was an incredible comeback, and we've seen... Oregon State be eliminated already, the defending national champions. We've seen other upsets yep. around the country. Great comebacks like Georgia Tech had today. How about Auburn's walk-off win last night against the Yellow Jackets in Atlanta? A lot of off-speed so far to Skelton. Ciccone with two strikeouts. That pitch in the dirt to even the count. That he died off speed. Let's see if he comes back fastball here. Maybe something with a little bit of tail that comes in on his hands. Righty versus righty matchup. And the 2 2. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Third strikeout for Slade Ciccone. Six up, six down for the Bulldogs and due up for the Canes, the talented freshman, Adrian Del Castillo. Three home runs in this regional. He'll lead it off up next. This game in Starkville, bottom of the second inning, the talented freshman, Adrian Del Castillo, due up first. He'll lead it off, and I tell you what, three home runs in this regional so far. He's been on fire. Yeah, that was in the sixth inning today in the first game against Central Michigan. One of six the Canes hit. And the Bulldogs will shift for Del Castillo to pull it to right field. He's done a lot of that so far this weekend. And the first pitch outside. Just a freshman. Plays much older than that at this juncture of the season. And this one swatted to center. Jake Mangum tracking. And an easy first out. Nice job by Plumley right there. That's a hurdle for him in this ball game. Getting through Del Castillo, the hottest hitter in this tournament, if not in the country. Mangum has been spectacular in center field so far, despite the lack of production at the plate. Last four games without a hit, one at bat tonight. He has been rock solid defensively. Raymond Gill, deep into the night. Mangum drifting back at the track, at the wall, and it is gone. Raymond Gill, the solo shot, and Miami strikes first. His 13th of the season, his second this weekend. That is pure power, and I'll tell you one thing. Gino Damari loves the fact that he's using the whole, whole field. He had an opposite field home run in game one, got a base hit to right field, and this one straight away center. Deepest part of the ballpark. Mangum ran out of room. It's exactly what Miami needed to take the crowd out early. 
Well, you and I saw this club against Central Michigan way back on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Jumped out to a 4 0 lead. Mm -hmm. Ended up losing in the ninth inning, 6 to 5. Since then, they've been operating offensively on an entirely different plane. JP Gates got underneath that one. Shallow left. And Rowdy Jordan will record the second out. And just when you think you may have a breather, here comes the seven hole hitter, Alex Terrell. He and his 24 home runs. There's Coach Damari, first season as the head coach. 20 years overall as an assistant, was a former player at the U as well. Alex Terrell, 24 home runs this year. That's one more than the entire team had a year ago. And two of those bombs have been hit here in Starkville. Bulldogs will play the shift towards right. Plumley doing a nice job of settling in after giving up that long ball. But he's got to dig in here and finish the deal on Terrell. Swung on and miss, and down he goes. First strikeout for Peyton Plumley. But the game strike first. Raymond Gill, the third baseman there. Sitting on a pitch, he gets it, puts the foot down, opens the hips, and out of the yard it goes. The Hurricanes on fire, their 10th home run in this regional. They're saying, hey, don't cut us out. We're just getting going. Beautiful night for baseball here in the Magnolia State. one nothing Miami, top of the third inning. And Rowdy Jordan, one of the best baseball names you could ever think of, will lead things off. He also has a team high six hits here in this Starkville regional. And he has been wearing out that right side. Sophomore to Auburn, Alabama. Pretty good speed, second on the team in stolen bases this year. Falls behind 0-2. A lot of 94s out of the arm of Chaconi. He is pumped. You surprised with how effective he's been so far? I'd love the fact he's handling the moment for a freshman. It's pretty amazing. Especially on the road in this environment. Three pitches, and down goes Jordan, the fourth strikeout for well, Slade Ciccone. How about that? One of the hottest hitters in the tournament. The freshman goes up there and has a three-pitch see ya, and he does it with just fastballs blowing him away. Here's Josh Hatcher. And you're talking about 10,000 strong. They have been waiting for this game all afternoon, all evening long. Lot to deal with. Hatcher out in front. And after all those fastballs, pitching coach J.D. Ortiaga says, let's go change up here. So Hatcher sitting on a fastball, blew by that change up. 40 games for Josh this year. He started 30 of those contests. Check that 25. Big series against South Carolina. Hit three home runs to lift the Bulldogs past the Gamecocks. Drafted by the Angels two years ago as well as he fouls this one off. He's showing him off speed, and then the fastball is getting him late. So he's, the plan is working right now that they are employing on Mississippi State hitters. An MSU victory tonight. They'll punch their ticket to the Super Regionals next week. And this regional matched up with the Stanford Regional. Right now, Fresno State in control out in Palo Alto, California. Boy, that was borderline fastball right there and lives the swing another day does Hatcher. The 2-2. The inner half behind a called strike three. Five strikeouts for Slade Ciccone. Rarely do you see an umpire on a borderline go ball and then maybe the same pitch, but it's got a little more run. That is definitely a strike coming back. Nice movement on that two-seam pitch. Nick, we saw him Friday night. I don't know if his stuff was as electric as what we're seeing here this evening. 
out of the nine hole is Marshall Gilbert. Two and one. I agree with you. Compared to the other night, the other night was pedestrian compared to this stuff. This is electric. Gilbert one for eight. Here this weekend. I'll tap that one weekly foul. And we had talked about it in this regional. The line's down the fields here. It's turf at the line for about 18 inches, then it goes over into grass. When players bunt the ball, it'll have tend to go foul if it's on the turf part. If you get it on the grass, it'll usually stay fair. The 0-2 served straight away center, but right at Lala. And a perfect start for Slade Ciccone. Nine up, nine down. Canes lead it by one. Back in Starkville, Mississippi, Miami leading Mississippi State 1-0. Here in the bottom of the third inning, Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott. Michael Amditas, the hard-hitting catcher, will lead things off for the Canes. And Amditas, the heart and soul of this Miami team, has dealt with all kinds of adversity. Injuries. His family's dealt with a lot of tragedy. He lost his dad the first day he was supposed to report to school at the U. And he has survived and really done a remarkable job as one of the leaders for this Miami program, the 0-1. And Venus is definitely the veteran leader, just a sophomore. Very rarely do you see a sophomore voted captain. That's the case here. 0 for 7 here in Starkville. Plumley did a nice job in that last frame, Nick, settling down after giving up the home run to Raymond Gill. I agree. That was something that could have escalated. Outer half knee high to call it strike three. Second strikeout for Peyton Plumley. And out of the nine hole, Gabe Rivera. Five for nine in the regional. He's hit two home runs. He has all kinds of raw power. Former 9A player of the year in Florida. And Plumley finding a groove here. Massive power. We, ball has not carried to left field in this regional, except when Gabe Rivera hits him. All bets are off. Now it sounds a little different off the bat, and the ball just seems to carry an extra 30 or 50 feet at times. You mentioned the left field. It's been a tough spot to get one out of the ballpark. Not for Gabe. Look at the size of those forearms. Rips this one to short. And Westberg snacks it cleanly. So Plumley's retired four in a row. Top of the order, two up next, Jordan Lala. And a job right here for Lala. Get something going. Work that pitch count. First time up, Lala swung at the first pitch, made it out. He's got to work him better here. And fly it out to left. Back in the first inning. One and one. It's hard to believe Miami and Mississippi State have never met How in this that? facility. Isn't that amazing? Canes are actually three and one against the Bulldogs, but none of those matchups in Starkville, and they've played at least have been in this area multiple times over the years. Last meeting back in 05 in the Coral Gables Regional. If the chalk held, this meeting would have taken place yesterday. Right. There's Chris Lamonis in his first season. Stops at Louisville, Indiana, and the Citadel before he arrived here in Stark Vegas. Job he has done, 48-13. 34 wins here at home, just five losses. 
that one nearly hit Lala. He said, too bad because it's a basically treated like a neutral site deal. He said, too bad you can't see when they hit the home runs, the light show and the smoke comes out and fireworks come out of the scoreboard. And Gino Damari played for the great Ron Fraser, the wizard. He was his leadoff man. He was a 50 stolen base guy at the top of the order. We've talked about it a little bit this weekend, but how many times have we seen in recent years a team reaches Omaha one season? Yeah. They don't win the national title. The majority of the roster returns next year, and then they go back to the College World Series, and then they do win it. And I think that's one of many reasons why many people have Mississippi State as one of those teams that, that should get there and has a great chance to win it all. And that's what Arkansas is hoping for. Sure. Two hopper to second. And over to Plumley covering. Nicely done. One, two, three, go the Kings. Top of the fourth coming up. Miami leading Mississippi State. One nothing. Top of the fourth inning. Colby White's got a nasty four-seamer. And was staring our camera guy down down there in the Mississippi State dugout. Not to mention a little river dancing. Yeah, they do this when their pitcher goes one, two, three in the batting order. Colby White will reward him with the Colby White river dance. He was throwing some serious heat last night. A 7-2 victory against Central Michigan. By the way, tip of the cap to the Chippewas of CMU. No question. Head coach Jordan Bischel won 19 games in a row before losing the last two here in Starkville to finally be eliminated. Great team. We really enjoyed getting to know those guys a little bit this weekend. And also to Southern University, head coach Carrick Jackson. SWAC coach of the year. Bischel was the MAC coach of the year. Really impressive talent on display. And Megan beats it out at first. And a base hit to lead things off for the Bulldogs here in the fourth. That'll be their first of the night. He's laughing any way you can get him, right, when you're scuffling? Because the line drives come right after that. Almost a swing and bunt right here. He knows he's got great speed. I'm surprised that play was that close. First hit of the weekend. The all-time hits leader in SEC history. And he is a threat to steal. Here's Westberg. Serves this one down the right field line. That'll drop for a base hit. Rounding second is Manga. And he's going to be stopped at third. A late stop sign put up. But the Bulldogs in business after the double by Jordan Westberg. And want to welcome those now tuning in on the SEC Network. Here in Starkville, Mississippi, Miami leading the Bulldogs 1-0, but Mississippi State back-to-back -back hits for the first time tonight, threatening here in the fourth. And that's what we wanted to see. Ciccone gives up a hit. He goes into the stretch position for the first time in this ball game, and in the first pitch from the stretch, he gives up the double to Westberg. Now it's on. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott here at Duty Noble Field, and this crowd has come to life. Tanner Allen digs in. And right now, the pressure on Slade Ciccone. Let's see how he handles it. He breathes through the first three innings. for 11 in this regional. Here's the 0-1 inside. If you're Ciccone right now, take a couple of deep breaths. Work the plan that J.D. Artiaga, your pitching coach, gives you right here. You may see some off-speed pitches coming up. You can see the heart going right there. Breathing hard. Join the crowd. Two and one. 
Ciccone. Perfect through three, has given up two hits. Yeah, it's been all fun in games until right now. He's pitched brilliantly. Miami has to win tonight and tomorrow to advance to the Supers. Bulldogs undefeated so far in this regional. Two and two. Winner of this regional will get the winner of the Stanford Regional. Fresno State currently undefeated out in Palo Alto. After that 92 mile an hour fastball, do they dare go back there or go change up? He's got a good one. Crowd will tell you the story here. Back up the middle. That'll score a run. Runners at the corners, nobody out, it's 1-1. One, one. Now Millar couldn't come up with it cleanly. And Mangable ignites this crowd once again. They go straight challenge, fastball. It finds a spot, Villar right there just can't get it out of his glove. And now a meeting on the mound. And this is a slow down the heart rate. G.D. Artiaga going to go out and take the slow walk and say, hey, look, he just hit a ground ball. It's no big deal. You got a swing and bunt. Yeah, he hit the double good. But out of the three guys on base, only one guy hit the ball well. So pitch your game, work your plan, and we'll get out of this. Well, if you're just tuning in, Raymond Gill hit a home run to center field to put the U out in front of Mississippi State. Yeah, this quieted the crowd early, a hanging slider. And that was Miami's 10th, yes, you heard me right, 10th home run of the day. And Ciccone, with nobody on base, was setting the tone with the full windup, but now the game has sped up for him. Mangum gets the things going here with a swinging bunt. Remember, they have not hit the ball well except for Westberg. Sometimes that's all it takes. That one little hole in the dike, right? It's starting to widen in a hurry. Here's McNamee. Strikeout victim his first time up. That last stat's amazing. Oh, oh, for 18 with that guy? Zamora fields it cleanly for the first out. Well, that was hit. A line drive by McNamee, but right at the shortstop. And this is going to be key here, this at bat for Foscue. Ciccone makes the right pitch here. He can get out of this thing with one pitch enticing a double play. He's got to hit his spots, keep everything down. Allen's a good athlete, does not have great speed over at first. It's one stolen base this year. I think they'll keep him there, keep that right side open for Foscue to shoot it through. Westberg over at third base. Foscue launches this one to deep left center. And tracking Lala right in front of the wall will make the catch deep enough for the runner to tag from third, and the Bulldogs have their first lead. Nice job by Foskey. Gets a pitch he can elevate, gets the runner home on the sacrifice fly. But if you're the Miami Hurricanes, you're saying, good kid, you got two outs in the last two hitters. So if you're Gino Damara, you'll take that. No question. Dustin Skelton 0 for 1. Strikeout victim in the second frame. The hard-hitting catcher. Ball will get back to the backstop. Advancing to second is Tanner Allen. The 
Bulldogs with another runner in scoring position. Skelton owns a career-high 10 home runs this year. His power numbers are certainly up. And the average at 307. Big moment early in this one in Starkville. Kane survived against Central Michigan earlier today, 18-3. to They won back-to-back -back elimination games after the Chippewas got him back on Friday night, 6-5. to And a breaking ball on the outside corner. This would be a big out if Zaccone could get it. One and two. That's one of those as a hitter you're saying, how did I let that pitch go? Two seam fastball right down the middle. Now you don't have to give in to him. You also have a base open. Do you dial up a fastball above the hands or a slider away? Skelton four for ten in this regional. Sent a lot of called strike three punch outs here in Stark Vegas this weekend. Yeah, they went for the fastball above the hands. Not elevated enough, and Skelton was able to get a bat on to keep the at-bat alive. And that's what good hitters do. Fight off the nasty pitches and then find something you can put in play. You love this matchup right here. Saw one ACC SEC matchup. North Carolina handled Tennessee in Chapel Hill moments ago. Now Mississippi State will try to return the favor to Miami here. Chopped up the middle. That'll get through for a base hit. Rounding third is Tanner Allen. No throw will be made. It's three to one Bulldogs. And that's what Skelton did. He fought off a nasty pitch, stayed alive, and got a pitch he can handle. You can see that hole right there up the middle. And that top spin's going to shoot it right into center field. Tanner Allen scoring easily. This place is going crazy. Four hits in the inning. RBIs by Allen, Foscu, and now Skelton. And if you're Gino Damari, you, you may want to start thinking about Getting somebody up. Rowdy Jordan. You can't let this thing escalate to the point where they throw up a big, big number. Now the first three innings, Ciccone threw a combined 31 pitches. This inning alone already at 17. Jordan's been on fire. We talked to him back on Friday after that 11-6 come from behind win against Southern. Hit a home run, was so humble in our conversations with him as Gino Damari issues instructions to his defense. He's telling everybody to move over towards left field. Jordan just stays alive. Hit a two-run homer against the Southern Jags, the SWAC champions, and this gave Mississippi State some much-needed insurance runs. The two-run blast to right field. Yeah, nice little Virginia flexion right there on contact. Got out up in front and hooked it out of the yard. The 0-2. That pitch was supposed to be way out of the zone. He missed his spot by about a foot to a foot and a half here. Watch the setup by Amditas. Hello. And that's right back in Rowdy Jordan's wheelhouse. That's a big break for the Canes. On an 0-2 pitch, no less. 
That's the last thing you want to do is give the guy a chance. You're heading the count 0-2. And, and that's a Rowdy Jordan wheelhouse pitch right there. Now you're at 20 pitches for the inning. A lot of bad things happen after pitch 20 in an inning for pitchers. Fastball high. So you got to remember, he came in here amped up. Breeze through the first three innings. Now, he's had some adversity. He's over 20 pitches in the inning, and this is sometimes where maybe you get a little bit tired, leave a pitch up you don't want to leave up, and you're too amped to hit your spot. But he's got to dial it in here if he's going to get out of this inning. And Ciccone clearly laboring after the fast start. Jordan wants to take advantage. Question is, can he? Let's do it again. That was another nasty pitch that was fouled off by a Mississippi State Bulldog hitter with two strikes. Boy, Nick, he just can't say enough about the environment here tonight. It's incredible. Feels more like a college football game. Ball and two strikes. Here comes a pitch. Served in the right field for a base hit. Big turn for Skelton. He'll dig for third and get there easily. The fifth hit of this inning for Mississippi State. And just like that activity in the Miami bullpen. Rowdy Jordan just wearing out the right side of the field in this regional. This is a hanging pitch. Goes out and gets it. And another big clutch hit for Rowdy. MSU started 0 for 9, now 4 for 6 in this frame alone. Tyler Kaiser up and throwing. They're going to go to a lot of their frontline guys like Kaiser, Valiz, Fetterman. Those are the guys in their bullpen that are their mainstay guys. They can't mess around. If they lose, it's over. But the brilliant job that Van Bell did today, Brian Van Bell in the first game, he kept guys like Kaiser, Valiz, and Fetterman rested. But they can't afford to let Mississippi State run away and hide early with the crowd. And then they've got to get it out here if Miami is going to escape out of here. Skelton at third, Jordan at first. And Josh Hatcher out of the eight hole struck out his first time up, but he's got five hits in this regional. That's Van Bell, 53. He did a great job when eight innings saved that bullpen for this game. And a big cut by Hatcher. You know, Hatcher has started all over the outfield this year for head coach Chris Lamonis. Started left field, six in right, 16 is a DH. That's where he's at tonight. Solid player. And if you're Miami, this is a spot you got to be careful. You've already given up three runs. This home crowd on its feet for the most part this entire inning. This will be his 26th pitch of the inning. It's a lot. That has not been the issue throwing strikes. A couple of CNI hits and a couple of barreled ones. Let's face it, he hasn't really been crushed out there. Mangum's hit was a swing and bunt. The Westberg double, that was good. Tanner Allen didn't hit the ball that hard. Skelton's hit was a ground ball up the middle. Three hopper, Zamora at short. Fields and fires in time. Bulldogs get the job done, and it all got started with Jake Mangum. Five hits, three runs. MSU its first lead of the night as we head to the bottom of the fourth. 
explode for three runs on five hits in the top of the fourth. Leading Miami 3-1. to one. Welcome back to Stark Vegas. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott here with you. And what this environment, Nick, has been exactly what we expected for a matchup like this. I mean, this is an incredible environment. Mississippi State players feeding on it. They went down early, and all of a sudden, a quick hit. Jake Mangum gets it going. The crowd erupts. Jacoby, the pitcher for the University of Miami, he had to deal with it. Now they have a 3-1 lead. Let's see if Miami could come back. Anthony Villar will lead things off out of the two-hole. And Villar grounded out to short his first time up. Mentioned it back in the first inning. His father, Henry, played baseball at Miami. His teammates with head coach Gino DeMario. Gino gave us a funny line earlier this week. He said, without question, Henry's son, Anthony, the better baseball player between the two, and it's not even close. <laughs> sure, Henry's been taking ribbing all week on that one. And Villar into the shift. We'll send this one to Mangum in center field for an easy play. There's one away. Big shutdown opportunity right now for Mississippi State and Plumley. The crowd's in it. They have the lead. Now it's time for him to settle in. And Plumley looking like an entirely different pitcher. Since giving up that home run to Raymond Gill. And here's Freddie Zamora. Zamora just two for 14 here in Starkville. Five-tool player has all kinds of ability. You watch him play shortstop deep in the hole. The arm strength is there. He's going to get you out more times than not. Chop this one behind the bag at third. Gilbert airmails the toss. And with one out, Zamora is aboard. That's one of those is a third baseman. You have to recognize where you are, the speed of the runner. You might want to just put this in your pocket because these are the kind of balls you just throw away. The whirl around throws. Sky to near usually don't work with a guy with some more speed, and the accuracy part is negated. But he'll learn that as he goes. Now, both of these teams with plenty of firepower, and perhaps no player more explosive so far than Adrian Del Castillo. Six hits here in this regional, three home runs. He's driven in seven. 0 for 1 tonight. You saw Del Castillo take that pitch right about where he would like to swing stepped out and refocused he knows he missed an opportunity there and quickly oh and two what's it like as a player you've played in a game earlier today the team you're facing has not it is kind of a different mindset right yeah absolutely it's you got to refocus the whole scenario is different the crowd's packed Really wasn't many people here in the first game. But in terms of stamina, that was something certainly that sure. Gino Damari was trying to balance, and he was able to get a lot of his starters out of the game earlier after they grabbed a double-digit advantage. Gino Damari, and he's coached and seen a lot of good ones. Pat Burrell, Ryan Braun among them. He's talking about a guy like Adrian Del Castillo and saying, this guy could be the best ever at the University of Miami. And that's, that's saying something. A lot of years as a hitting coach. Also played at Miami. Del Castillo could be two. Foscu. Westberg in time double play. A twin killing retires the side as Zamora is erased. Well, when you need a big out and a big hitter, you go home to the address of four, six, Three, double play lane that gets them out of the inning. The crowd is up. Big, big inning. Starkville, Mississippi State leading Miami 3-1 to one with Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott, joined by the head coach of the U, Gino Damari, and coach Slade Ciccone back out there on the bump. What's your message after he just gave up three runs? Well, they do a good job with two strikes. They put the ball in play. I mean, they, uh, you know, shorten up. We went inside on them. They didn't hit too many balls hard there. I mean, the leadoff guy hit a dribble, but they can run. They put pressure on your running. They hit a ball hard up the middle that knocked in a guy. Uh, so uh, we just got to keep plugging away. A lot of game left to play. Mm -hmm. Got to keep giving good at-bats, and uh, Slade's got to get ahead and get this leadoff guy. 
Yeah, let's talk about uh, your pitches to have to rest it away. McKendry's the guy. Will we see him, if need be, late in the ball game if it came to it? No, no. He will not throw until tomorrow. Okay. Coach, appreciate the time. Best of luck rest of the way. Okay, thank you, guys. Gino Damari, first season as a head man down in Coral Gables, longtime Miami assistant and former player at the U. And that's a very interesting thing. McKendry will not be available, even though McKendry said yesterday at a press conference, I could throw tomorrow. You know, that's a player saying that, of course. Gilbert, a shot to left, and Rivera tracks it down. And we said McKendry treated yesterday's ball game almost like the 37 pitches, like a throwing session. Just go out and throw a 37-pitch bullpen, but usually when you do that, you get the next day off. Of course, there's a lot more at stake here in that scenario, but it's right now up to, to Coney, and the heart of their really good guys out of the bullpen, Fetterman, Valise. Kaiser. Those guys are up and available to go. Plenty of good arms, and here's Jake Mangum, one for two. Scored a run. Start that rally in the last frame. Through the left side for a base hit. Mangum is two for three. That little hole in the dike is opening even wider now. All it took was that swing and bunt to get him going. That's the old Jake Mangum right there. Get a pitch you like away, just fillet it to left field. Mangum, the first three-time, first team, all-SEC performer. Now fifth all-time in D1 hits history. 374. It's a lot of hits. To say the least, now standing at first as Westberg fouls it off his foot. And the beauty of that statistic right there, most of those hits came in the Southeastern Conference, arguably the best conference to play in the country. And that's the kind of pitching he's had to face the four years here in Starkville. All-time hits leader in SEC history. Fetterman is getting loose in the Miami bullpen, by the way. Westberg's one for two. Had a double and scored a run his last time up. Top of this batting order for Mississippi State really has not been what you would expect the last two weeks, but when they get going, this is one of the top offenses in the country, and Manga, and they call him the mayor around here. He has more nicknames than you can count. He's been here for so long. That was his 99th hit on the season. Mangum always a threat to go. I mean, Nick, he returned to Starkville to win a national championship yes. this season yeah. in his final campaign, right? Yeah, it's it's more than just trying to make it to a big league as a player. He loves this place. He wants to bring a national championship to Mississippi State. That's where his heart is. They never won one. This could be two. Zamora with a turn in time for the double play. And that... Will retire the side. Miami hanging around, trailing three to one. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One in Starkville, Mississippi. The Bulldogs leading Miami three to one. And with Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott, joined by the head coach of the Diamond Dogs, Chris Lamonis. Great start tonight, Coach. You and I were chatting briefly moments ago. What an atmosphere for this regional matchup. Yeah, it's a. Uh Shoot, it's been every night here with our fans and this ballpark. And uh, the reality is we built this ballpark for nights like this, and um, it's pretty special. Coach, uh, you got a guy, Plumley on the mound. He's done a nice job, gave up the one pitch to Gill. You have to be happy with what he's doing. Yeah, he's been good. He's, you know, you got to keep it down the zone. Miami's a really good offensive team, but uh, kept them off balance a little bit and just trying to keep the ball in the uh, lower half of the zone. And how about Jake Mangum? A very weird 0 for 18. He gets a swing and bunt, and now he's back to the old Jake, right? Yeah, we talked last night. He needs a Jake hit. And that, was a, <laughs> that was a Jake hit right Beautiful. there. Um, there's a lot of them in there, but there's a lot of other great at-bats. So hopefully that gets him going a little bit. Chris, appreciate the time. Best of luck rest of the way. Thank you. Chris Lamonis, first season as the head coach here in Starkville. See, and his team on the verge. That's the beauty of baseball. You get a swing and bunt, Texas leaguer. 
That'll get you on a hot streak every time. I mean, I'm imagining Nick Belmonte back in the day. That's how you really kick-started oh, a nice oh, streak. Oh, I lived off a lot of those. Are you sure. kidding me? That's why I quickly said it as soon as he hit it. I said, that'll kick-start you. Just two hits for Miami. One by this player right here, Raymond Gill, but he'll be retired on the strikeout by Plumley. Good breaking ball, hit in the count. Bat clearly passing by home. Mark Winters calling balls and strikes tonight. Brian Marine over at first base. Hardworking veteran umpiring crew all over it this weekend. JP Gates flying out to left field his first time up. And the Bulldogs shifting. Play Gates to pull it to right. When did the shifting become so common in college? Fairly recent. Yeah. W only within the last few years. You would see it sporadically every now and then. Someone would do it on a specific hitter. But now it's become almost mainstream up and down the lineup. Oh, and so many metrics being tracked. Everybody's got the same intel, that's right? That's exactly right. It's all metric and analytics driven. Mississippi State essentially playing with four outfielders as Foscu in the outfield grass. And Gates goes Oppo for the third hit of the night for the Canes. Well, that's one way to beat the ship. Yeah, Gates with a couple of hits in the first game now hitting. He struggled the first couple of nights of this tournament, but now he looks like he's back on track. For more coverage of the Division I baseball regionals plus interactive brackets, make sure you head over to NCAA.com. It's already been a wild day. Across the country with these baseball regionals. How about Florida State and Mike Martin winning the Athens Regional, topping Georgia today 10 to 1. Yeah, congratulations to the 11. Big win in Athens. And Florida State was the three seed. And that's the thing about it. Mike Martin, this is his last season, so Mike's taking it now to the next step, the Supers. There's Alex Terrell, 24 home runs this season, two this weekend. And a big cut. Corral made his mind up. He was going to swing first pitch no matter where it was. Pulled off of that. Shoulder flew open. Really seeing the ball very well in the last 13 games. Also one of the vocal leaders for this Miami team. Which is interesting. Mississippi State plays him pretty much straight up. Central Michigan had four outfielders. They had, they had one guy on the whole left side of the field. It was crazy. This is more traditional. Well, Central Michigan had Yoda and Santa Claus <laughs> on its side this weekend. Yeah, but they were playing them the pole <laughs> towards the North Pole. <laughs> Ball and a strike to count with a runner at first and one away. Make that two and one. That's a nice job by Terrell laying off a nasty changeup. That pitch is designed to get you off balance and hit it into the ground. Great discipline. He's got one spot right now he's still looking at. Two-seamer two inner third that he could pull out of here. And if he can, it'll happen in a hurry based off what we've seen so far. Up the middle, off of Plumley, And they'll get the force out at second. Over to first, in time for the double play. Wow. I think Miami might review this. With Karam right off of Plumley to Justin Foscu. That was a slow developing play because of the care, and it would have been a spectacular double play if, in fact, it goes this way. That is an amazing feed by Foscu. See the end of the play right here. And he's safe. Yeah, the foot gets down before. Remember, if it's a tie, it doesn't matter. There's no such thing as tie goes to a runner. That does not exist in any rule book out there. That's a myth. But the foot does beat the throw. You can see it on that one look. Yeah. 
barely, but it does. And of course, this play is reviewable. Reviewable, excuse me, as they'll send it to the NCAA Video Review Center. And in Nick Belmonte's expert opinion, we expect this call to be overturned. I really do. One look we had looked pretty obvious that the foot went down before the ball was in the glove. Pitcher Plumley hanging around the mound as well. Right there, it looked like the foot was on. Yeah, the foot's on the base right there. The ball, as you can see, clearly not in the glove yet. Terrell certainly not known for his speed. Did a nice job hustling down the line to create the bang-bang play. However it turns out, the Foscu to Westberg turn was amazing because it was so slow developing because of the carom. I'm surprised they even got it that close. I really am. And Mark Winters, home plate umpire, indeed indicates the call will be overturned. Terrell safe at first. So they get the 1-4-6 force as Gates is a race. And that'll bring up Michael Lamditas, the catcher. Miami would love to keep this train moving and get Gabe Rivera a shot at the plate with some runners on base. He's on deck. 3-6-0 for Mississippi State. 1-3 and 0 for Miami. Inside, ball one to Amditas. Sophomore out of Boca Raton, Florida. Member of the All-ACC second team this season. Mentioned his injuries. Broke a bone in his left leg in the seventh game of his freshman season. Missed the rest of the year. Nick, he was injured in high school as yeah. well. Well, when Jim Morris recruited him, he was hurt. Missed his senior year of high school. But he was such a big get. He was a Team USA guy. Amditas coming to Miami, he was going to be the next big thing behind the plate. And then all the injuries happened. And the personal things happened. And here he is fighting through all that. And he's now a guy. Had a really nice year. Right now, he's everything they thought he would be. Ball and a strike. Terrell at first. The modest lead. Make it two and one. We'll say this, too. Gino Damari indicated after their win against Central Michigan, they came to the park last night yes. to watch Mississippi State Central Michigan. Yep. It was a 7-2 win by the Bulldogs. And he said all of his players were just incredibly impressed with how well they were treated by this Mississippi State fan base and really just praise the environment, the atmosphere, and the hospitality here in the Deep South. I thought that was a nice gesture indicating that. That's how they do it here. They're great people. Tiki Lounge out in right center field is rocking only 883 miles away from Omaha, home of the College World Series at TD Ameritrade Park, and what a scene it will be. In about 13 days from now, we remind you, regional coverage continues on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3, plus whip-around coverage also available on the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage, of course, That's on Hobie's. the ESPN app. Hobie's Tiki Bar right there. Hoover, 142 miles where the SEC tournament happens. Omaha, they got the distance there. and I love the last sign about the Carnegie Hall of Baseball, right here. That's a friendly group of people. I've been out there before. Tanner Allen will lead things off. And a fly ball to deep left will be tracked down by Rivera. All right, if you're Miami, Sacconi starting to settle in just a little bit. You're only trailing by two. You're right where you want to be if you can get that offense going. Absolutely. It's going to start getting some leadoff man on, getting Plumley slowed down in the stretch. Meanwhile, if you're Mississippi State, you're in the Tiki Lounge, Well, you're having a great night. But Did you see who was down there? Who? That was Zach Cohn from Central Michigan. There he is in the it yellow is. hat. That's, yeah. that's the alias Yoda. That's Hiki, the third baseman. He's down there. Enjoying the atmosphere. Those kids earned it. That's part of making it to a regional. You earn all of this. Not a chance to play. 
you earn the chance to be part of the atmosphere. That's good stuff. That's what it's all about. McNamee. Just another story in the chapter for the Central Michigan Chippewas. It's a team that won 19 games in a row, That's including right. a win against these Miami Hurricanes on Friday. They were the MAC champs. And a really fun story to follow this year. First trip of the postseason since 95. Chippewas eliminated earlier today, 18 to 3 by Miami. Canes also eliminated Southern, the Jaguars, the SWAC champions this year. And here we are in the regional final. Win by Mississippi State tonight. The Bulldogs will host the Supers next weekend as McNamee sees the count even up. Pulled a string on that one. McNamee trying to hit the left field loft on that one. Nobody's ever done that, by the way. Yeah, they measured it to be well over 500 feet. You got four teams that have already punched their ticket to the Supers, FSU, Carolina, Texas Tech, and Duke. All undefeated in their respective regionals. Nice play for the second out as McNamee heads back to the dugout. Two quick outs for Ciccone. I, I really like what he's doing. Weathered the storm, and he knew it was probably going to come. Freshman out there, big environment. Look at him, he looks very composed right now. Well, it's one thing to be that way now. It's another thing to maintain composure with what we saw back in the fourth inning when this crowd starts to erupt. It's insane. Foscu's 0 for 1. Average right at 350 this season. Got underneath that pitch. Skies it to left field. And Rivera into the night. Reaches up for the 1-2-3 inning. Gabe Rivera out of the nine hole. Some of the best power on the field. He'll lead it off. The name Gabe Rivera in the dictionary. The translation is raw power. We've seen it all weekend long here in Stark Vegas. He's hit the only two home runs to left field that haven't previously touched an outfielder's glove because one actually went off a Rowdy Jordan's glove, and that's pull power in a ballpark where the ball has not carried well to left field. Don't tell Gabe Rivera, by the way. He'll lead things off. Bottom of the sixth inning, Miami trailing Mississippi State three to one. And a first pitch low and away. And then Johnny Johnson, and if you're watching, yes, you did hit a home run and a big one to left field. As a member of the Southern Jaguars ball club. Chop foul, will even the count. That was funny on that play where Jordan had it in his glove, hit the wall, and it goes for a home run. Right before the press conference, I was talking to Chris Lamontis, a couple of guys, and he comes over to Rowdy Jordan. Why didn't you catch that? <laughs> we practiced that. What's wrong with you? He's, of course, kidding. Well, Jordan told us, man, I had it. Body hit the wall, and it just popped out at the last second. This is what we're talking about. He has it in his glove. This is Johnson's home run. Now he's going to time it perfectly. It was in his glove, and then when he hits the wall, I think it's inertia that knocked it out. And that homer tied it up at six apiece. You don't want to mess around with inertia. And Rivera will chop this to Gilbert at third. We can't quite corral it. And the leadoff man aboard for the U. That would have been a tough play either way. The big man, Rivera, let me tell you something. Not only does he hustle out everything, he's got pretty good speed. Once it takes this hop here into the glove, it was going to be a tough play. That'll be scored a hit. And Rivera, all 5'11", 220 pounds of him, now sitting over at first base. Great athlete, to your point. He does have better than average speed. He's got six stolen bags this year. And I just love the way he plays the game hard. He had a pop-up that was dropped. He was on second base, no questions asked. Top of the order up next, Jordan Lala. Prototypical leadoff hitter, according well, to Gino Damari for yeah, the U. Yeah, about four, four years ago, my postal carrier comes up to me. He's my son just gets committed to the University of Miami. 
I said, is that right? Is he a senior? She goes, no, he, he, he's in ninth grade. His name's Jordan Lala. And his mom, Kelly, is my postal carrier. She's here tonight somewhere, so I don't know who's delivering my mail <laughs> all week. You, know, you have more stories like that, and I've heard more of them this weekend than I ever have before, and it's amazing because we'll, we'll, we'll by, walk by somebody yeah. and they come up, shake your hand. Nick Belmonte, hey, I remember this. You remember this guy? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you yeah. guys sit there and talk, and I'm just trying to get dinner. <laughs> But it's always a fun time to listen. 2-0 the count. I mean, this guy right here, he's all over the place. He knows everybody. I mean, he's a baseball guy through and through. It's just what he does. I even know the players' moms who are my postmen. That's right. Or postal carrier, I should say. You're dropping all these big words on the broadcast tonight. You went plethora on me earlier. I Inertia did. moments ago. That went through the right side for a base hit, and Miami has something cooking. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning, digging for third is Rivera. Neither and Miami with runners at the corners, nobody out. Neither snow nor rain nor heat or gloom of night will keep Lala from reaching first base. Nice down and through swing right there, and that's what Miami needed. He got the leadoff man on, he slowed down Plumley. And Lala delivers. That's just his second hit here in the Starkville Regional. So Peyton Plumley now has to settle in. You got the heart of the order coming up in a two-run contest. How many times have you and I looked at each other this weekend, looked at the scoreboard and said, whatever the run total was, it's mm -hmm. probably not going to be enough. And I think three runs tonight, probably not going to be enough for either side. Just a hunch. Without question. Too much firepower on both sides. And... Chris Lamontis, he's going to the pen. Now well, Peyton Plumley has done a remarkable job. And that'll be all she wrote this evening. We'll be responsible for Rivera at third, Lala at first. And the first call to the bullpen will tell you about the new MSU pitcher after this. Now the Miami Hurricanes, just before the start of this inning, gathered around by Gino DeMar. We saw this earlier today, a scoreless game, top of the third against Central Michigan. What did they do? They exploded for 18, including seven straight innings, scoring at least one run. And so far, here in the bottom of the six, same talk, same impact. Yeah, in the third inning, they came up with three runs after the talk in the first game, followed up with a five-run fourth, a three-run fifth. In a three-run six. I'm going to talk to Gino at some point tomorrow and ask him if he can talk to me. Maybe he can put me <laughs> on the right track as Tristan Barlow checks in. I can make that. I'll arrange that for you. Don't worry. Yeah, Barlow's a guy that is really uh, coming in left-handed hitter. Very effective against left, left-handed pitcher. Very effective against left-handed hitters. 90-93. Good slider. He may be in possibly as a matchup guy here. But potential lead run steps in the box. Miami, one of the youngest teams in the country. No player on the roster with postseason experience prior to Friday. Anthony Villar takes low for ball one. Well, the Canes with a tying run aboard as Plumley. Looks on and a quality start only Absolutely. gave up the one run so far. Without question. Did his job. Jared Lee Belt getting loose. We had fun talking with him back on Thursday. Out of the Bulldogs bullpen. Lee Belt, I believe, got the win. He did? Against Southern. That was a night where Southern gave everyone in this ballpark a scare. It was a tight game late. Seventh inning, it was tied at six. That home run you saw just moments ago by Johnny Johnson. Big cut by Villar, even the count. If you're Miami, you're in this situation, obviously you want to get the run home from third. You make it a one-run contest, but what's the mindset here with nobody out? Put it in play. Keep the train moving. You got the power guys lurking. Stay out of a double play, whatever you do. We've seen a couple of turn tonight. One by each side. 
Lala does have plenty of speed over there at first base. 28 stolen bags this year. And just yeah. 33 attempts. Yeah, he's looking to see what the left-hander will do. And one of the things you could look at from the lefty, and they all do things different. Look at that big glove. See if it makes a difference going home or first. Fastball high. The other night, we were looking at the glove of the southern pitcher. And what he was doing when he was going home, he dropped his glove about a foot. Didn't do that when he went to first. Lars, six hits in the Starkville Regional. And works a 3-1 count here. And you can see Barlow right there as he went home. As your base deal, he said, okay, he lifted his glove up. Does he turn it back around him if he throws the first? Is that the difference? Because then if you see the glove go up, he could take off for second base. Lala is the potential tie run at first base. I think it's the first time tonight the Canes have had a runner in scoring position. And a walk will load him up. Bases loaded, nobody out for Freddie Zamora. Yeah, and that'll drive a coach crazy because he came in on, for the left on left. He loses them. Now the bases are loaded. You got to face the right-handing hitter Zamora, who's feeling pretty good right now. First walk issued by MSU pitching. Chris Lamonis holding on to this two-run advantage that's in jeopardy. And here's the quandary: you want to keep Barlow out there to face Del Castillo, who's on deck. So he's going to have to push through this righty. Bulldogs infield, a double play depth. Big moment in this baseball game. 0 oh 1. Zamora didn't like the call, he thought it was inside. And Del Castillo. Here comes trouble. Big time in the on deck circle. Three hits in the regional for Freddie Zamora. Including one tonight, his last time up the back. Found that off his shin. So Barlow has some options. An 0-2 count. And if you're Zamora right here, anything, just put it in play. He's got good speed. He's a hard guy to double up. Now, if he hits it on the screws to somebody, one hopper, it'll be a double play. But you widen the zone. The last thing you want to do is get caught looking here. And First Gino three tomorrow, of reach for Miami. Excuse me. Gino tomorrow say, hey, if he swings and misses strike out, that's fine. Sure. He'll take that. At least he goes down swinging. Crowd doing their part. The 0-2 pitch. On the way. Now Zamora, freshman All-American last season, probably hasn't had the kind of season he expected this year, but still has been very productive as a five-tool guy. Yeah, Scuffled had some injuries. Scuffled early in this tournament, but did get a hit towards the end of the game this morning. And now he's got been on base and hit the ball hard in this ball game. So he's feeling pretty good about himself. He's probably mad at himself for not getting hit with that pitch. And one, two. Serves this one down the left field line and hooking foul. Jabarlo, what are you looking for here maybe to get past Zamora? I want to think if he's got a good changeup, this is the pitch to throw because he can get him to reach. That's the kind of pitch that you can tice you into hitting into a ground ball double play. But he did go slider on that pitch. Another thing you can do here is muscle up on a fastball up the ladder and Tyson to either strike out or pop it up. Should be one of those two. Ball and two strikes. Up the middle, could be two. Westberg, Foscu, double play, the run scores. That'll make it three to two. A 6-4-3 twin killing. And that's what you try to avoid. Chris Lamotis is feeling really good getting the two for one off the no less right-handed hitter. And he hit it too hard, right? So it's an easy 6-4-3 with his speed. 
Runner at third, Jordan Lala. Base hit with tied up. And here's Adrian Del Castillo. Well, he's 0 for 2 tonight. Three home runs here in the Starkville Regional. Let's see what happens here. Popped it up. Shallow left. Rowdy Jordan makes a play. And Barlow works out of a major jam. Canes do add a run to make it a one-run affair. Six in the books here at Duty Noble. Well, a fun night in Starkville. Emotions running high in a 3-2 ball game. Bulldogs undefeated here in the Starkville Regional. Miami in another elimination contest. Jake Mangum getting the party started earlier today. And a great baseball game unfolding here at Duty Noble Field. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott. Been a lot of fun this week here in Starkville. They don't call it Stark Vegas for no reason. This place is hopping. Slade Ciccone remains on the mound for Miami. Dustin Skelton will lead things off. It'll be 6, 7, and 8 up first for the Diamond Dogs. Now Slade Ciccone has been solid. The only misstep back in the fourth inning gave up five hits outside of that. He's given Miami exactly what it wanted tonight. Freshman pitcher has been amazing. One hiccup inning, yeah. and in that inning, we chronicled it. Swing and bunt. Tanner Allen's ball was a ground ball. Dustin Skelton was a ground ball up the middle. Jordan's hit was solid. Westberg's double was solid. There's only two hit balls in that inning. Ciccone's longest outing of the season. Seven innings against Jackson State. One of those midweek starts. He's pushing that threshold tonight. Two and two to count to Skelton. And by the way, Golden State just beat Toronto to tie the NBA Finals up at one game apiece. So, he happened to be flipping, looking for another game. We're happy he landed here on SEC Network. I got Golden State winning that series, too. They're going to win a title. Another one. All right. Well, sticking with the favorite? Well, I mean, they were an underdog in game one. They probably All right. were tonight as well. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Do with that what you will. Two balls and two strikes to Skelton. And down he goes. A strikeout for Ciccone. That'll be his sixth of the night. And his first since back in the third. Well, for you, UM fan, you're loving this. Your guy's out there dealing. Pull the string on that, got him way out in front. Well, think about this. Miami could have easily hosted a regional were it not for that loss to North Carolina in the ACC tournament last week. They blew a 5-0 lead, lost in extra innings. In controversial fashion, we should say, too. 7-5 was the final, but had they won that game and advanced in the ACC tournament, that was the final game of pool play. Gino Damari told us, and he said he told it to his team, he felt like that would have been enough. They would have been a, a top 16 seed and would have been hosting. Instead, they're here in Starkville. As Jordan grounds out. So, I mean, this is a team that certainly is capable of advancing out of this region. Without question. I think when Mississippi State saw the seeding, is oh, Miami's coming here. Ooh. They're good. Finished fourth in the ACC this year. The offensive production has increased tremendously as Hatcher takes low. And think about this. Miami's record probably would have been better if McKendry was healthy all year and McMahon. Yeah. And Zamora missed 11 games as well with a shoulder thing. But this time of year, you make no excuses. Two good teams. One run game but late. Here in this regional final. Tap to second. Villar up with it. One, two, three. Go the dogs. Stretch time here in Starkville. Mississippi State. A 3-2 lead. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Beautiful Sunday evening.
for postseason baseball here in Starkville, Mississippi. Bulldogs lead the Canes 3-2. Bottom of the seventh coming up. And a new Mississippi State pitcher to tell you about. Colby White, and I tell you what, he's a flamethrower. He touched 100 on the radar gun earlier this season, Nick. Yeah, absolute gas. Fastball slider change. And he's going to challenge. And what I like about it, 43 Ks in just 23 and two-third innings. For a power pitcher, only seven walks. That's impressive. So this inning really going to be worth the price of admission, whether you're here in the ballpark or watching at home around the country or around the planet. You got his fastball against Raymond Gill, who has two home runs in this regional, and then Alex Terrell, who has two home runs in this regional and 24 on this season. Power versus power in two of these three Miami hitters. Boy, if one of these guys connect to that, you're going to see inertia at work. <laughs> <laughs> And to top it all off, a one-run contest here in this regional final. Miami needs to win to stay alive and force another game tomorrow night back here at the Duke. Victory by the Bulldogs. They're on to the next round, the Super Regionals next weekend back here in Starkville. Kills one for two. He leads things off, is responsible for one of the two Miami runs. That was a solo homer back in the second inning as Terrell will also be up to bat in this frame. Shift is on once again, and a big cut by Gill. That'll come up empty. Swinging for the loft right there. That pitch ate him up on the inside. See all the real estate right up the middle between first and second. Three infielders to the left, the third base side of second, if you will. And this one through the shift in the left field for a base hit. His second of the night and a good start for Miami. I like this guy, Gill, the way he sprays the ball around. Big, strong hitter. He's not just a dead pole hitter. We've seen him hit a home run to right field, home run to center, base hit to right in the first game, and now that double actually singled down the line. Power to all fields. And how good has he been over at the hot corner in this regional as well defensively? Tremendous. J.P. Cates is one for two. Gill at first. Oh, and one. Well, Gates started this season as a pitcher who could hit. Had a big at-bat in a series against NC State, ninth inning, and a long home run. And Gino Damari said, man, I got to play you more. Yeah, it's Kind of an afterthought. Go ahead and pinch hit, kid. He hits the home runs. Like, uh oh, wait a minute. I got to rethink this. Swinging for the fences here. It's quickly 0 and 2. That one at 95. May want to dial up another one over the hand, see if he'll chase after it. You have him in chase mode now with two strikes. Sometimes, if you get cute and try to breaking ball the hitter, once you've blown it by him, he'll make a mistake. The 0-2 on the way. Swung on and miss, and down goes Gates. Voila. You had him very aggressive. He's swinging at fastball. Just throw him one over the hands. See if he offers. And he does. The high heat, too tempting for Gates to lay off. Here's Terrell. 24 home runs this season. Two in this Starkville Regional, looking for three there, and he comes up empty. I got to dial it in now. Terrell just saw what happened to Gates. Make sure that your swing is a little more compact. Doesn't mean you can't hit a home run, but don't over swing here. The win has died down here at the two. And it's 0-2 to Alex Terrell. Gill not really a threat to run at first. This crowd feeling it. Down he goes. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Colby White.
Great challenge, 93 mile an hour fastball. Here it is, try to hit it. Crowd just over swings through it. Six straight strikes from Colby White, all between 93 and 95 miles an hour. Straight gas. And Ditas digs in. Splits it down the middle, 94. Michael M. Ditas 0 for 2 tonight. Hitless in this Starkville Regional. Couldn't catch up to that 95 mile an hour heater. That bore in on him. 95 up above his hands. Ground on its feet. The 0-2. Just nabbed a piece. Roy, that's a good location. You don't want to throw him a strike here. Everything should be out of the zone. You've earned that luxury. I mean, you keep climbing the ladder here if you're Colby White, right? Exactly. You can go up the ladder, up and away, up and in. Make them chase it till they at least get to a 2-2 two -two count. Crowd will tell you. The 0-2. Missed this spot right there. You saw the catcher, Skelton, set up away, and that was right down the heart. And White said it. That was my bad. He tapped the top of his chest. See him off the plate. Look where that pitch was. And he missed pitches by a foot. Yeah, you can see White right there. Hey, yeah, my bad. I missed my spot. Time run aboard, two outs, an 0-2 pitch. Steady diet of fastballs above the hands. Nice job by Adidas, just making contact. And when you do that, you just hope that you stay alive long enough to get something in your wheelhouse, a mistake like we saw two pitches ago. Take by Amditas. Crowd up willing that last strike here in the seventh. Potential lead run at the plate. Seventh pitch of the at bat right here. And Amditas stays alive. It's a great at bat. Steady diet of fastballs. He has a slider in his arsenal. But the philosophy here is. Throw them fastball until they can hit it. If you are going to make a slider, throw a slider here, this would probably be the pitch. But it would have to be outer third away. We're feeling good about Adidas not catching up with a fastball, though. That's why you're seeing so many. The one, two. You run the danger right here, Roy, by throwing so many that he's eventually going to catch up to one. Well, at some point, you go off speed, right? And that's one of those where you think it through as a coach. You go, I don't want him to get beat with his second best pitch because if he speeds up his bat, he might barrel it up. And next thing you know, he crushes a double or a home run. That's what's going through the pitching coach's mind right now. Well, Antidas has fouled it off five times with two strikes. I'd go up and in fastball, but up above the hands. Gill at first. Just missed. The pitch that ate him up was the fastball up and in that he swung through. This is a great at bat. Fell behind quickly and has stayed alive. And Ditas versus White. A 2 2 offering. Fouled off again. 
And Vetus fouls off a 96 mile an hour pitch in the 11th pitch of the at bat. Folks, that is not easy to do. The concentration you have to put forth to do that. Incredible. Red shirt sophomore catcher. Heart and soul this Miami team. Fly ball, straight away center. Right behind the bag at second. Foscu makes the play. Side retired. And White wins that battle. Leadoff single is wasted. Mississippi State through seven with a 3-2 lead. Dinning back in Starkville. 3-2 Mississippi State leading Miami. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott. Back at Duty Noble Field, and a new pitcher to tell you about for the Hurricanes. As Slade Sacconi's night has come to a close after seven strong innings. Gave up the three runs, all three earned, six Ks, and no walks issued. Slade Sacconi, the son of a neurosurgeon, he was surgical tonight himself, except for that one little hiccup in it. He was great. Fetterman out of the bullpen, 6'1", 200-pound sophomore. This kid is a big-time competitor, really gets after it. Look at the strikeouts on the season, 60 and 48 and two-third innings. Fastball, he'll touch 95. Cutter in a change, and that cutter is a big pitch for him. Well, Nick, you and I have seen and called a lot of high-scoring games this weekend. This has turned out to not be one of those kinds of affairs. But how great has this game been so far? It's the energy in this place is amazing, number one, but it's been well played. The old fashioned pitchers duel, even that inning where Mississippi State scored the three runs, not that many balls hit well. But right now, Mississippi State trying to tack on, as I always call it, the Gordon Gecko part of the game. Greed is good. You want to tack on here and get away from that one run lead. Well, that's the name of the game. You've got 9-1 and 2 due up first. You lead it 3-2, to two, but an insurance run or three would be preferred if you're a fan of the Diamond Dogs. Absolutely. I mean, if you do that, you start to have the opposition think, well, maybe it's not our night. You want to plant that seed. I want to welcome those viewers now watching on ESPN2 here in Starkville, Mississippi. Bulldogs leading Miami 3-2 with Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott. It's been a well-played baseball game here in this regional final. Diamond Dogs looking for one more win to punch their ticket to the Supers next weekend. The Canes need a win tonight and tomorrow to do the same. And Marshall Gilbert out of the nine hole will lead things off. He's 0 for 2 tonight. And the first call to the bullpen made by Miami. Daniel Fetterman just checked in the game. 99 in orange. Replaced Slade Sacconi, who gave head coach Gino Damari seven strong innings this evening. He was outstanding. The freshman handled not only the bats of Mississippi State, but the crowd, the environment. The 0-2 to Gilbert in the dirt. But all this firepower the University of Miami has, they have six more outs, only down one. Imperative Fetterman throws a zero up here. All three runs for MSU coming in the fourth inning. Got started by Jake Mangum, the all-time hits leader in the SEC, a leadoff single. Later came around to score. Bulldogs tacked on two more as Gilbert takes high with a fastball. And Mangum in the on-deck circle. Two hits tonight to break out of a four-game slump. The SEC career hits King. The King, that could be a new nickname for Jake Mangum. Go. He's known as the mayor in these parts. Papa. Granddaddy. By his teammates. And Gilbert battles back to force a full count. Big pitch right here, Nick. Big pitch setting the tone of this inning. The payoff. 
Down the right field line, slicing out of play. And we'll do it again. Now more than 10,000 strong on hand tonight to watch this regional final. Raymond Gill got the party started with a solo shot back in the second. Bulldogs battle back with three in the fourth. Canes had the bases loaded, nobody out in the sixth inning. Freddie Zamora hit into a double play that drove in a run. No RBI, of course, and here we are at 3-2. Yeah, that was a big escape act right there by Barlow. Gilbert, the senior, takes low for ball four. And the leadoff man is aboard for Mississippi State. Not only that, you got Jake Mangum coming up to do a lot of things. He can bunt, he can hit and run. Now you're holding the runner at first base. The last thing now, Jake Mangum, you want to have happen is the right side open when a guy like Jake Mangum's up. Mangum with 99 hits this year. 374 in his career. That's top five all time. And after the first walk of the night issued by Miami pitching, Mississippi State a golden opportunity right here. Third baseman. Gill up for the Hurricanes, taking the bunt away. Doesn't mean he won't try to bunt, get that runner over to second base. Any insurance run here will be huge. Well, he was scuffling. Sometimes you just need that swing and bunt to get going. His coach called it a Jake hit. And then the next time is the normal Mangum variety. Hits it through the six hole, and he's going, oh, yeah. Bulldogs reach Omaha last year in surprising fashion. Jake Mangum returned to school to try to win a national championship and take the dogs back there this season. In the center field. That'll drop for a base hit. Rounding second is Gilbert. Lala struggled to come up with it. And sliding in safely at second base is Jake Mangum. Well, that's the Jake they know here in Starkville. Oh, yeah, that's me. A self-proclaimed Justin Timberlake fan is Jake Mangum. And he can't stop the feeling that he gets when he plays in front of this crowd. 100 on the year. And more importantly, the Bulldogs with two runners in scoring position, Nick, and nobody out. Here comes JT Ari Daga. This ball's hit to center field to Lala's left. When it lands, he doesn't get it cleanly. It hops out of the glove. If Mangum had designs to go to two, he clearly did at that point. So far, I believe they've just scored it a double. I don't see an error on the error total. That's correct. So Miami's pitching coach, J.D. Arteaga, on the mound. What's he telling his pitcher at this point? Well, a couple things you would think Miami has a decision to make whether to bring the infield in. He had the entire infield in there with him, but they're talking about what is the pitch he needs to get an unproductive out, whether that be a pitch on the corner, something to get the hitter to pop it up. How about that? First player in history. This is a program that has had some unbelievable hitters. Will Clark... Rafael Palmero to name just two. Infield comes in. Yeah, you have to do it. You don't want to, but you have no choice this late in the ballgame. Westberg, the batter. Nobody out for Mississippi State. You could technically pitch around him with a base open. Try to get him to chase something. If you're Westberg, looking for something he can elevate. One for three tonight. One hit, a double back in the fourth inning. Through the middle. Base hit. Gilbert comes home. Mangum right behind him. Here comes the throw. 
off the line in Mississippi State. That's two to the slate, the Bulldogs. With a 5-2 to two advantage. Bulldogs feeling it now. Just six outs away from advancing. Westberg got a big hit back. In the fourth inning, delivers once again. Lala's going to come up, throw going. He misses the cutoff man right here. Runner gets the second base, and that's going to be it for Fetterman. So Westberg. Delivers two runs on the single. He advances to second on the throw. Still no one out for Mississippi State. And the Bulldogs extending their lead to 5-2. Gino Damari saying, look, we got to stop the bleeding right now. We have a lot of hitters in our lineup. Mangum, he's feeling it. They're six outs away here at Starkville. Westberg with a two-run single moments ago. Mississippi State extending its lead against Miami. Five to two, our score here in the top of the eighth inning with Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpock. Great to have you with us. What an atmosphere here at the Dude. And the Bulldogs right now looking pretty good. Absolutely. I call this the Gordon Gecko innings. Reed is good. Tack on runs. Jake Mangum, he knows that what that's all about. He got the big hit. Westberg follows. They're six outs away, and they still have business to do right here. Yeah, Westberg standing at second. For Tanner Allen, first pitch swinging, fly ball to left. And Rivera tracks it down easily for the first out. And the new pitcher to tell you about, Red Valise, the closer for the Canes. It's the first time we've seen him this weekend. Yeah, he's obviously fresh. They've been holding off on him for the right time. They were hoping to get Fetterman a couple of hitters and then bring in Valise thinking that maybe he could close it out at the end, the game being tight, but there's no tomorrow. He had to get in now. Cleanup hitter tonight is Elijah McNamee. 0 for 3. Back from a left foot injury, and it's been effective this weekend prior to tonight. First start over in right field here in this Starkville Regional. And Belize is another guy that he's touched 98 on the season with his fastball. Power slider 85 87. No and two the count. This game tonight continuing a trend of ACC versus SEC today. We saw Florida State. Upset Georgia in the Athens Regional. Final score of 10 to 1 as the Seminoles have advanced yeah, to Mike, the Super Regional. Mike Martin, you better hold off on that uh, retirement party. You might go all the way to Omaha, my friend. North Carolina handled Tennessee shortly before we came on air. And here tonight, Miami and Mississippi State. The SEC looking for payback this evening against one of their rival conferences. The 0-2 to McNamee. Cut on and miss, and a big strikeout. That pitch looked like a fastball. It was actually off speed. Got him way out in front, 85 mile an hour changeup. This fastball, when he throws it, it gets into a different gear. And that's a tough out he just got. McNamee, no stranger to big hits. Foscue out of the five hole up next. And Justin, 0 for 2 tonight, did drive in a run with a sack fly back in the fourth. Fastball at 93, just missed. And if you're Chris Lamont, it's your net dugout saying, let's get this runner home from second. Three is way, way too tight. Monus in his first season stops at Indiana, Louisville, the Citadel. He's done a great job in his first campaign here in Starkville. 
to third. Gill shows the arm strength as the side is retired. For the Bulldogs, play two and extend their lead. Five to two, our score. Bottom of the eighth, coming up. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Here at Duty Noble Field in Starkville, Mississippi, the Bulldogs of MSU, number six national seed, leading Miami 5-2, to two, bottom of the eighth inning. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott, a new pitcher to tell you about. Jared Liebel, the senior from Aurora, Illinois, and psychology major. Second time this weekend we've seen him, Nick. Yeah, and he's a good one. He's a mainstay in their bullpen. Not an overpowering guy. Touches out at 86, 87. Cut fastball slider, but everything moves. And a strike throw, and that's what they need at this point right now. A lot of strikes. They have the three-run lead. Six outs to go. Start counting them down. Gabe Rivera will lead things off out of the nine hole, followed by Lala and Villar. Back to the top of the order. Now, Lee Bell, an interesting case study. We had a lengthy conversation yes. with him back on Thursday about his Pokemon expertise. He said he's caught all 900-plus characters in Pokemon, and it was substantiated by Jake Mangum. Said, I don't yeah. even know what that means, but it sounds impressive. <laughs> you apparently do, which is also impressive. Yeah, you, you have to actually go out, out in the streets and, and chase them and catch these characters. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I thought you were trading cards or something like that as Rivera, big rip. I'm out of touch, apparently, when it comes to Pokemon. Well, they have these big events where people ascend on a city and Pokemon characters are hidden all over the city and you track them down and catch them. And he's caught all of them, according to him now. That's Pokemon Go? Yeah, and, and, and Mangum said that is true, his teammate. Rivera hits sharply to short. And Westberg fields and fires cleanly. One away. Five outs to go. And somehow, Miami has to figure out this math problem, and that is this. They need to get a couple of men on base to bring the tie and run to the plate. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals plus interactive brackets, make sure you head over to NCAA.com. You can check out all of the incredible action that has taken place today around the country. Surprising upsets, walk-off victories. And a handful of teams have already punched their ticket to the Supers next weekend. Mississippi State wins tonight. They'll also join the party. Well, I just asked the umpire if that pitch was a strike that he swung at. He said it was. Lala, one for three, and a freshman. Five-two player. There's a look at all the teams. Two out of the ACC make that three in Auburn as well. Finding a way in the Atlanta Regional, in addition to Texas Tech. And more to follow suit, of course, tomorrow. What promises to be another busy day, postseason baseball. Two and one the count. If you're just tuning in, Miami, one of the youngest teams in the country. Mississippi State reached the College World Series last year. He's trying to get back with a veteran ball club that has all kinds of talent. Well, Miami has, count them, zero upperclassmen in their lineup, in their batting order. And tonight, they threw a freshman pitcher. That's how good they're going to be. Lala works a 3-1 count as Lee Belt delivers, low and away. And the Canes get a runner aboard with one out. And just the second walk issued by Bulldogs pitching. All right, so what's the strategy now? You've got the tying run in the on-deck circle. You've got Villar up to bat out of the two-hole. Well, that's the math problem they have right here. Got to get that second guy on to bring the tie and run to the plate. Kane's one of the top power clubs in the country this year. 85 home runs as a squad. Had just 23 collectively a year ago. And if you're Lee Belt here, you don't worry about that runner at first base. He means nothing. If they want to try to send Lala in this situation, which they won't, 
have at it. Yeah, no reason to. They trail by three. Lars 0 for 2, did walk his last time up. Count evens at a ball and a strike. You can see the movement that Leibold gets on his pitches. He grew up in Wisconsin. He was a big Ryan Braun fan. I said, you know where Ryan Braun went? He goes, yeah, Miami. How about this? He might be able to close it out against his favorite player's uh, college team. Two and one. It's interesting, too. Lee Bell told us, you know, I really don't get rattled. Nothing is going to get under my skin. And then Jake Mangum stopped him for a second and said, wait a second. There's been times. It's happened. <laughs> it's happened, yes. But this is the guy you want right here with that mindset. Nice and relaxed. Ho-hum. You got the lead. Crowd behind you. Five outs to go. He's not thinking about Pikachu at this juncture no. either. <laughs> Served in the left field. That'll get down for a base hit. And the tying run comes to the plate. So a nice job by Villar. And with one away, the Canes are suddenly in business. How clutch has Villar been? Now we mentioned this back in the sixth inning just a few minutes ago. Bases were loaded, nobody out. Freddie Zamora, the batter, hit into the 6-4-3 double play. That scored a run, but it really stopped a Miami rally that could have been a lot more. Huge backbreaker for Miami, that double play. Enticed by Farlow, the lefty. And Zamora a chance to redeem himself right here. Infield a double play depth. For MSU. This crowd suddenly just got eerily quiet. That's twice now that Zamora has scampered away from a ball that could have hit him. In the last situation, it was bases loaded. And that's one of those where the coach down at third base going, mm. wish it would have nipped my guy, didn't you? If that had happened, back in the sixth inning, you would have had Del Castillo up with the bases loaded in a 3-2 game. And he's in the on-deck circle right now. One of the top freshmen in the country, and he's got three home runs in this regional this weekend. He so, just wants a chance. Yeah, so you got to avoid that double play one more time. Zamora, a freshman All-American a season ago. He nubbed that one right off the leg. That was a fastball moving in on him. Couldn't hold up his swing. Get it to in the inner left thigh. And he's going to be checked out as Gino Damari, the head coach of the Canes, will talk to him, as will the Miami trainer. Season on the line, of course, he's going to stay in there, especially in a moment of this magnitude. Zamora has sneaky power, so you have to be careful. Six home runs on the year. He is capable. We've seen those kinds of dramatic long balls today and throughout these regionals. The 1 1 from Lee Belt on the way. Roped into left field. That'll fall for a hit. And the Canes with the bases loaded for one of the more dangerous hitters in the country. Adrian Del Castillo. So the mini game within the game, the Cur Hurricanes have figured out the math problem. They've brought not only the tie and run and put them on base. They've got a guy that is probably one of the hottest hitters in the country with a chance to give them a big lead here. Home run here, but gives it a 6-5 lead. Buckle up for this, A.B. El Castillo 0 for 3 tonight. He has hit a couple of moonshots in this regional. Now, here's the difference. He's been facing guys that have been throwing 4, 5, 6 mile an hour faster than lead belt's been throwing. Let's see if it makes a difference. Senior versus freshman.
Lala at third, Villar at second, Zamora at first for the U. One of the rare times this weekend you can hear a pin drop here at the Duke. Ball and a strike. Outfield playing him fairly normal. A tad deep and right. A shade to go opposite way and left is Mangum. And a shade to go opposite way in left is Jordan. Mangum going a step to his uh, right and center. Two and one. Zamora runs well at first. Villar, decent runner at second, but the runner at first, Zamora, anything in the gap, he should score. Canes have to win this game tonight. Force another winner-take-all matchup tomorrow night back here in Starkville. The Bulldogs hold on here. They're on to the Supers. And they'll host next weekend. Big cut by Del Castillo, and he comes up empty. Now he dialed that up 92. I want to come back at that same location. The 2-2. Two -two. Could be two. Westberg with a turn. In time, double play. Listen to this crowd. Big, big pitch enticing the ground ball. Three outs away after this 4-6-3 double play. Mississippi State, they feel it right here. They're up. They're counting the outs. Oh, yeah. For the ninth inning, and the Bulldogs celebrating in their dugout after turning the 4-6-3 double play, their third of the night moments ago to get out of a major jam against the Canes. Yeah, Lee Belt had that ball running away. He rolls over it, and they're feeling it. Counted three outs to get him to the Supers. But it's not over yet. Five, six, and seven, two up first for MSU here in the ninth inning. Canes will have a couple of power bats here in the bottom of the ninth. And Belize back on the mound for the U, and he hits Dustin Skelton with the first pitch. Diamond Dogs looking for more insurance runs in this frame. Well, you and I were talking between innings for Miami. If they could throw a zero up here, next inning, Gil Gates get aboard. You have guys like Terrell and Rivera home run threats, but they have to keep it here at a three-run deficit. Yeah, look at that right there. You get those two guys on. Terrell obviously capable of tying it up. Jordan saying, uh-uh, we're going to run away and hide here. Rowdy Jordan digs in. One of the top hitters in the Starkville Regional this weekend. Six hits coming into the night. One already this evening. Gill up on the grass expecting Jordan to bunt. And that's normally what you would do in this situation. Mississippi State, not a big bunting team. Only 19 sacks on the entire season. And Chris Lamonis still has to like the position of his club here in the night. And he's got a guy that's a hot hitter up right now. He's not going to take the bat out of his hands. Gordon seeing the ball very well as he slices that one out of play. That's why you don't bunt here. Take your chances on seven for 12. To that point, Gill retreats behind the bag at third now. You saw him tap his heart right there. That's what they do at Mississippi State when they get two strike count. 
Now, what did Tanner Allen tell us? That really has been the motto, battle with two strikes this year. And that's what that means. And Chris Lamone was doing that with his players last year. The game you and I had in Indiana, the Indiana players were doing it. He brought it over here in Mississippi State. I like that. You get you really re refocused with two strikes. And what a great job he has done this year. Bulldogs with 48 wins prior to tonight. As Jordan stays alive. He's been all over the country, Lamonis. Played at the Citadel, coached there, then at Louisville, Indiana, before arriving here in Starkville, and he's just taken this thing and yeah. kept it going in the right direction. Yeah, I think he brought the anchor with him here, though, in Starkville. He's not going anywhere. He loves this place, and why not? Look at it. And Jordan waves at a pitch out of the zone. For the first strikeout, get the second for Valise. Chris wants this extra run, these tack on runs in a worse way. Look at that, 48 wins first season, Mississippi State. 40 plus wins for Gino Damari, first year at Miami. And we had three first year head coaches in this regional. Jordan Bischel at Central Michigan, Mac Coach of the Year leading the Chippewas to the tournament for the first time in 24 years. Trying to get to win number 49 tonight. Hatcher hitless in three trips. It was five for eight. Before that. It's amazing. This program through the years really came on the map with the great Ron Polk took over this program. I think Ron could have ever imagined this kind of atmosphere with these kinds of facilities. All the success that we've seen here in Starkville. They reached the College World Series last year despite finishing 500 in league play. There was an early coaching change, scuffled for a bit. Yep. They Gary Henderson. Late. Yeah, the interim coach took him to the College World Series and almost won it. Brown wants some more. 2-1 to Hatcher. Runner goes. Swung on and missed. The throw to second. Not in time. That'll trickle into center field and taking third is Dustin Skelton. How about the catcher? You go, Dustin. And that's a big insurance run standing at third base right now. Dustin, that is stolen base. Number three. E2, the throwing error charge. The catcher is Hatcher is quickly retired. Two away. I mean, the play was probably a hit and run, but when he missed it, it's up to Skelton to go ahead and get that base, and he did. There is activity. Bulldogs bullpen. Cole Gordon getting loose. He has been a strike throwing machine in this regional this weekend. Two outs and a first pitch strike to Marshall Gilbert out of the nine hole. That's a big run down there. Chris Lamonis, I guarantee you, is telling his guys, I want that insurance run. I want to be greedy here. Gilbert one hit in the regional so far. Nice block by Amditas. Well, that saved the run right there. And for the life of me, Roy, could you tell me why there's not a statistic that says that he just saved the run? Like an RS stack. Run save. That's an amazing job right there. That gets by. You're talking about a 6-2 to two ball game. Amditas got down there and got it. There's stats for everything. There should be a stat for that. You work on that. Ball and a strike. That'll get away from Amditas, but not far enough to play Skelton. And a good thing he held up. Nice recovery. Hit off his glove, but you're going to see Amditas go get it. Nice reaction by Amditas. He's probably going to say that was my fault that got over there, but he did the next best thing once it happened. 
Bulldogs were tested in their first game here in Starkville back on Friday. It was tied at six runs apiece against Southern. Before they pulled away late. Convincing win against CMU yesterday. Two and two the count to Gilbert. And now being tested by Miami tonight. You have a base open, but you got the SEC hit king on deck. So you want to go after Marshall Gilbert right here. And oh, Jake he Mangum, the last guy you want to see if you're a police at this point. Gilbert stays alive. The importance of that run at third. If he scores, you're talking about a grand slam only tying you up next inning. So that's an important run down there, Skelton, representing run number six. These two teams have poured it on offensively, but not tonight. Belize strikes out the side. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Canes trail at 5-2. to two. You're talking about one of the most storied programs in all of college baseball. The Canes have claimed four national titles, two back in the 1980s, 82, 85, and again in 99 and 2001. Miami an independent for those championships and now part of the ACC and, of course, currently on the verge of being eliminated here in Starkville. For the Starkville Regional, 5-2 to two our score, bottom of the ninth coming up. Nick Belmonte, Roy Philpott, and a new pitcher to tell you about for the Diamond Dogs. He is Cole Gordon, and, and he has been on fire himself. Yeah, we've seen good things out of Cole Gordon. 88 to 90 miles an hour, but a strike thrower. He knows this moment. He's a guy that decided to come back and pitch this year only two weeks before the season started as part of the internship program. He already had his graduate degree. You can see under it says SEC, it says graduate. And he's one of these guys that... He's not overpowering, but he knows the moment. He stays in the moment, and he's had amazing success in this regional already. Two games, three innings pitch, only 54 pitches, and he's only allowed one hit and struck out seven. Now the Canes have loaded the bases twice tonight, both occasions. They've hit to a double play, one by Zamora, the other by Del Castillo. And Raymond Gill will lead things off. There is some power. Set to come to the plate in this frame. Gill has 13 home runs this season. And Alex Terrell, who bat third, has 24. The shift in play for Raymond Gill. And Raymond what? Gill does a good job hitting the ball to the right side as well. They'll play him to pull it left, as you see right there. Well, a lot of real estate up the middle. And I'm assuming they're going to pitch him in. We have seen Gill hit a home run to right, a couple of base hits to right in this region. He knows how to do it. The 0 1 from Gordon off speed. Tap back up the middle. And Foscu over to first just in time. Miami wants the check. They say the throw pulled him off. Well, there's nothing to lose right here. You're down to your last three outs. Long way to run, off balance throw. Mm, they may have a case. That is a reviewable play, of course. Question is, did it pull Allen off the bag? Yes, it did. Did he get it back? It, he was momentarily off the bag. Did he get it back in time before the foot hit? That's the question. They're going to take a look at this back at the NCAA Video Review Center. And you're looking for indisputable video evidence to overturn the call in the field, which is very important. It looks like there's a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's some space in there. I would not be surprised if they overturned this. The throw, yes, beats him, but is the foot on the base? There's the nothing. last look was the most compelling there, Nick. Yeah, I saw a little air. He's off. Now, does he get back on in time? I don't think he does. I think he's safe. 
Well, a very big call here in the bottom of the ninth in a three-run game. Yeah, right there. He's safe. That foot is off. And it's because he had a long way to run to get that ball, and he threw off balance and didn't get over the top enough, and the ball drifted on him. That's what drew the throw off the bag. That angle there, the foot is on the base, while Tanner Allen, his foot is clearly away from the bag. Tanner Allen did as good as he can do to make that play, but the ball drifted too far to his left. See, Tanner's in a completely right place mechanically as a first baseman on a throw where that throw was. So he did everything right. It was just too far to his left. Now Gill, the leadoff man here in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the call from Mark Winters. Yeah. And he's safe at first. That's a good call. They got it right. So somehow, some way, the leadoff man reaches. And that's huge. It is enormous with all the power coming up to bat. E4 puts Gill at first. Yeah, Miami's like, I don't care how you score it. We got a runner on. Oh, J.P. Gates would be due up next. And instead, Gino Damari will go to his bench and bring on a pinch hitter. Chad Crosby. We've seen Crosby off the bench a couple of times in this regional. And this is one of those scenarios, too, where you don't necessarily have to hold a runner on first base. You could play behind them, give your first baseman range, especially with a right-handed pitcher and a left-handed hitter up. If you do that, you negate the hole you have over there now. Crosby hitting 2-0-3, the 0-1. Outer half, knee high at 91 miles an hour. You know Miami's not going to try to steal here, so you don't have to worry about that. If you play right behind it, and I'm not saying play 10 steps behind the runner at first base. I'm playing, saying play right behind them. Give yourself a little more range. Well, Cole Good. Gordon has secured nine outs in this regional. Seven via strikeout. Make that number eight. Nice pitch by Gordon, dropping that slider in. You'll see it right here. A little 12-6 action. We talked about that's more of a 12-6 curveball. Here's Alex Terrell. 24 home runs on the season. Two here at the Dude this weekend. What a season he has had down in Coral Gables. 0 for 3 tonight. And he's another situation here. He's a pull hitter. Got a hold of the right side. He can't tie it up. Canes down to their final two outs. Ball in the strike to count. But when you talk about power looming in the lineup, Gabe Rivera is two hitters away. And the Canes would love to get him up with two men aboard. Yeah, and Mike Terrell, he's got two home runs in this regional. Power up and down this Miami batting order. What a game this has been. What a great atmosphere showcasing this fantastic sport. Folks, this is college baseball. Welcome to it. Big pitch here, the 2-1. Fly ball to left center. Who wants it? Rowdy Jordan. And the Bulldogs one out away. Rowdy's like, I had it all the way. Crowd comes to its feet.
Fly ball to deep left center field. Mangum going back at the track, reaches up, makes the catch, and Mississippi State survives Miami. The Bulldogs punch their ticket to the Super Regionals. Capital One rewarding performance. Who else? Jake Mangum found a way to get the job done as the U is eliminated. And the all-time hits leader in the Southeastern Conference ignited a furious rally. And that guy right there, he loves it more than anybody in this stadium. What just happened? He's a big part of it. He got the crowd going. Big hits tonight. This is a balanced team, Mississippi State. They're going to a super regional to the point where they will be probably favored to go to Omaha in that one. Jake Mangum, our Capital One player of the game. What a weekend it has been here in Starkville, Mississippi. MSU one step closer to going back to Omaha in the College World Series.